Today's full card is from the Tarot of the Sweet Twilight by Christina Benintende. This is quite a wonderful card. It uh, invokes a lot of emotional response to it. And because of that, Dr. T, my husband and I, decided to have a little game with it. I'm a photographer in my background and I look at things from a photographer's perspective. This is why we're doing snapshots of the full. And my way of looking at a scene like this and deciding which parts of it I'll include for a photograph, which bits I leave out, how close I need to be to the subject, what I need to focus on, all of those things are what a photographer does. The idea with a, ph a photograph is to pick out some part of all of the things that are going on around us, pick out one piece and focus on that and hope that whoever sees the photograph also gets into that photo too and perhaps sees what you saw just in that moment when you took the photo but then they might see something completely different. And an, a piece of artwork like this does the same thing. The artist comes from whichever place they're from or she's from, paints a picture and invites the audience to come in and make their own associations. Dr. T is a philosopher as well as the webmaster and does the blog and all those other wonderful things that he does on his side of things. He's videoing this. He looked at the fall and came to his own conclusions. So we decided we would play a game in that I'll do this blog and he doesn't know what I'm going to say and then he'll do his blog and I don't know what he's going to say and we'll see how differently we interpreted the same card while we talk about a lot of things from Talk With Tarot. So there's the game. The first response that I had to this card, and it lasted for a few days of looking at him, was I felt really sad. I felt really sorry for him. He's so sweet and fragile looking, and he pulls on my heartstrings. And I spent a little bit of time looking at that. I thought at first he was wearing a mask. And then I realised that it wasn't a mask, that it's just the paint on his face. And his hands and his neck aren't painted the same way. So he reminds me of Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin and the mimes in French culture. The same kind of sad little clown. And then I thought, well... He's there to entertain us. He's been created to entertain us. He's a marionette. He's there for a purpose. And the purpose isn't his, it's ours. It's, it's all created for our pleasure. And that made me sad too. Where's his part in this? Where's his choice about what he does? Where he goes? He can't look up even and see who is pulling his strings. He doesn't have that ability with the strings the way they are. So that was where I started. The next thing I looked at were the symbols around him. Obviously the sun is there and the moon is there. And I spent quite a long time. And in the end I came to the conclusion that for me in this reading they're not actually important. They're not the main thing. This is Tarot of the Sweet Twilight, and they look to me like sweets. The orange of the sun. It looks like a peeled orange. I love oranges. And the moon is a, rather like a marshmallow, a pink marshmallow on a stick ready to, to toast in the fire. So I really left that as it was. I mean, the marshmallow and the sun, you could put those together as it, <laughs> as it toasting over this, the warmth of the sun. Could go down that path, and I thought, no, not this time. The cat was interesting, and the doll down here. Now, I'm going to call it the dog, because it looks 
like a doll. It also looks like a person, perhaps a fool. But it also looks like a dog with those sort of the fluffy bits on the side of his head, but like a um, ears and then the round nose. So I'm going to call him the dog for this reading. So I looked at that and the cat, as well as that tree, are old symbols. They're from the old tarot, long before Rider Waite. The cat is portrayed in the past as a fairly aggressive uh, character in the fall cards, attacking the fool. Sometimes it's seen as a tiger. But in this case I thought, actually it's not aggressive because it's not actually touching the, the fool. He's actually just playing with a string like a cat does. Plays with strings. So I left that one. And the tree, well, I don't know about the tree, but it's just old tree and it's great for marshmallows and toasting them. So I didn't pay too much attention to that one either, although I'm sure if I was doing a reading with this deck, quite different. You go down a whole different path when you see those sorts of symbols. So the main thing at this point was to look at the strings that the fool is attached to. He's got strings on his toes and strings on his hands. You can't see the end of the strings. They're actually in his hands and presumably through his shoes and into his, into his feet. So that made me feel sad. I mean, who would do that? Who would, who would put strings in him when they were creating them as a marionette? Then I thought, well, maybe I've got that wrong. Maybe the strings were in him all the time. They're just part of him. And that, in fact, instead of the control coming down from here into him, he, in fact, has his own control, which is connected up ways. So that started to turn the whole thing on its head and look at what he was up to and why he was there. So looking at the strings differently put a whole different perspective on things. I looked at the music that was there. He's a colourful character, he's in a rainbow. Perhaps someone else didn't choose the colours for him, he chose the colours for him. And he's actually a musical character. He's dancing, he's not marching, he's dancing. So he's got bells on his head. They're not tied to anything. Every time he moves, his hat will shake, his jester's hat, and it will make the bells ring. The drum is there, but it's not actually attached to him. There's no string attached. The uh, drum's not attached to him. So perhaps that drum is something of his choice. The cat's not attacking him. The cat's playing with the string. So perhaps the cat's a cool cat playing the bass. So there we have another view on him and in this case he's actually happy. He's dancing, he's happy, he's making music, he's got his companion, a new companion, and they're making music together. So that was pretty good switch. So here we are in a totally new place. We have a happy clown together doing his thing and then I thought He's about to step forward. He's about to possibly step on the dog lying there. And I looked at the face of the dog and I thought, you, you're the one, you're the boy thing there. Look at the face. He's really worried. The fool is about, probably, going to stand on him. Not only that, the cat, the old cat from the past, has become the spirit companion of the fool. So our little normal spirit that we're used to, the dog companion, is lying there. He has no strings. He has no connection to the fool. And he's at risk. So now we've come back full circle to a rather dark place again, which is interesting. So we've gone from sad to happy, 
and back to concerning at this point. So I looked again at the strings and to see how much volition and how much choice our clown has, our fool has, in what he's about possibly to do to the dog. And I looked at where the strings were attached. He has them at his toes and he has them at his hands, but not at his knee joints or his elbows. There's quite a lot that he can do if he swings his arm and his leg in a different movement. His drumsticks actually aren't situated as you would expect for a drummer. He's got one of them back to front. So perhaps he actually has some choice over whether he drums or not and the sound that he makes. So I looked at the strings and I saw they're actually slack. Nothing's actually pulling him up and down. These strings are more like holding him up so he won't fall. So perhaps the string and the relation to whoever is perhaps at the top is quite different. There's more of a supportive role holding him up no matter what so that he can't fall. Doesn't stop him making a mistake though. If he steps forward he may stand on the dog and hurt it. He can't possibly pick the dog up if he's got that string holding his hand and he's got the drumstick in it. But he could use his leg if he stepped forward just to flick that dog out of the way to safety if he chose to. And then I noticed the fish hook. Unlike the other strings which are all internal, this one isn't. This one has come from above, hooked through his forehead, right there. Anyone who knows anything about chakras, to them, and for us, the symbol of that chakra is initiative and self-control. Right there in the chakra, he's been hooked. And that takes me to the end in my idea about this clown. We've gone, I've gone from sad to happy to what decision will he make? Will he stand on the, on the dog? Will he hold back? Will he do anything about the dog? Will he just, just say that he can't do anything about it and if the dog is hurt then it wasn't his fault because he was controlled? He's pulled on my heartstrings. So then it dawned on me did he take the bait or did I take the bait? I don't know. Thank you.